with that, though, I'll tell you what. We got a, a short integration discussion today. I didn't want to go way long. I, I, I included the API in there, and I just love the API too much as a developer. I was going to go way long, so I thought, all right, why don't I just start with user authentication and ACLs? The meat and potatoes of users in any service. So just to kick it off real quick, user authentication is a bit weird in Rundeck. And what I mean by that is essentially you can have users with no roles. They're not a user and they're not admins. So basically you, when you go to log in, I think you actually get an error saying you're not a part of any group. You're not a part of any role. You have nothing. You will, <laughs> you have an account. Congratulations. Here you go. So what you need to do is go in to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to pull it up here. The property file login module, which is essentially just a flat file. Now you can use BC crypt. You can use plain text. You can use MD five. You can use any kind of hash you want to hash your passwords but essentially in this file what you're getting is who are the users what's their password again please encrypt it and what's their role so pretty simple on the basis that once you create these users that are out there they have defined scopes basically if you're an admin you essentially can define a role for you have access to everything as a user now you kind of get into these ACLs, right? You have, you get into your access control list. Who has access to what? Why do they have access to this? Who gets it? Who needs it? Why? Uh, before I get into the ACLs though, there are, a. am I'm, I'm, I hate saying a bunch, but there are quite a few other user authentication modules available. Uh, and most of them are based on, are you going to have to correct me? JAS, J A A S, not, Java as a service. I think it's Java authentication and authorization service. Um, oh, I hope I hope we never end up with Java as a service. <laughs> oh no! But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, that there are a bunch more modules. Uh, LDAP Active Directory. I think it has its own that is used. I know the Enterprise Edition also touches on the actual ability within run deck to kind of control these. Uh, but I'm not going to get into those. I don't want to dive too deep into that. Essentially what you get on your server though, as I explained earlier is a flat file where you can add users, remove users. And what we want to be able to do with portal is from portal. You're going to have in within the run deck service configuration, you're going to be able to add and remove users and at a base level. That's all you need to know. Right. But on the back end, essentially what we're going to be doing is, modifying this flat file. And of course we'll be using encryption for this. Uh, now to get into the ACLs, <laughs> let me take a breath here because the ACLs in run deck are, and can be as granular as you want, as complex as you want. You can limit people to doing one thing. You can limit them to doing everything. It's, at a basis level, what I first titled this podcast was CRUD, Create, Update, Read, Destroy, and I named that for the API. But now that I look at these ACLs, I might have to go back and rename it one more time for all the availability, basically, on jobs, who's allowed to run what, what projects they have access to, who's, you know, th this entire scope of roles and permissions that are available within run deck. Uh, so I will read the basic a what is an ACL. Now that you're probably wondering, uh, run deck access control policy grants users and user groups, certain privileges to perform actions against run deck resources, like projects, jobs, nodes, commands, and the API. Every action requested by users evaluated by the run deck authorization system and logged for reporting and auditing purposes. So, not only is the ACL doing that, and when I say doing that, I say authorizing and authenticate or authorizing users for that, but it's logging and auditing them. And once they get their log4j fixed, you'll be able to pull all these logs. 
Uh, no, I just had to put that in there for relevancy. But Oof. Uh, there's along with the ACLs, you get just instead of just having to manage every single user, you can add users to groups and then manage those groups accordingly. And what really stuck out to me, again, I think as we talked about with permissions is you don't want someone on, we'll just say develop your development team with access to, with admin access to entire systems, right? You just want them to be able to do maybe a handful of things, a handful of scripts. And if you create the jobs for them, you can grant them that permission to only run those jobs. And I think where we found it the most helpful as I talk about it for compositional enterprises in the R Compose is our API read run key. And basically what this means is with our API access, essentially what we do is we give portal, every, every instance of portal, we give a read run key. Now think if we gave it an admin key, that means if you're able to skillfully craft a request over to the Rundex server using that key pulled from the environment, which would be pretty impressive if you could do. Well, if you could do it even via the logging, that'd be even more impressive. <laughs> uh, you would have full access to the systems. To now, you wouldn't have access to every system, but you'd have access to the Rundex, uh, the, our Rundex server itself, and yeah, and, and that and could be admin self. Key can do a lot of things. That's yeah. self-destructive, right? That could mean we're just. A, that can mean I'm blowing away every job you have. Now you won't be able to access the way we have it set up. You won't be able to access other instances, um, but you could blow away every job on that Rundex server if you have admin access to it. You can create users, add users, remove users, but ACLs prevent this, and they do this with our read run key. We define a group. We say, hey, this is our. We define it at a user at a user level. We say, hey. This is, you know, our, I think we call it our compose API, our RO uh, for read only. And then we give it the permissions to just read and run, read output from jobs and run jobs. So they also have a cool little tr trick with the ACLs. And it's the last thing I'll touch on. Basically, the ACLs are managed through a YAML file. And what I found really cool is this YAML file, the server does not need to be restarted or the service does not need to be restarted. Essentially, I don't know if it's what they have going on in there, if it's some kind of cron job or what, but they have a YAML file and every, I think two minutes it said, it'll refresh and update from that YAML file. So an, a nice little feature uh, that's available. I did link also the scopes and everything out there. Uh, on Rundex documentation because they just have great documentation on... So speaking of their documentation, yeah. uh, if you refresh that page in Bookstack, uh, I actually added a section called Where Can I Edit the Policy? Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I pointed to specifically for end users, right? Because, I mean, what are you really realistically going to have access to? You're going to have access to the the front end, the web service. Sure, right? sure. So I, I link to their ACL policy GUI, and that walks you through um, where to find these access controls so you can look at them for yourself, uh, how to edit them, uh, how to list them, you know, the wizard that it walks you through, you know, new ones or, or modifications. So there's there's just a lot here, and, and there is, I wouldn't say a lot of hand-holding, right? But you know, it's it's a lot easier than a blank file. Well, with the UI, for sure. I'm just look, I'm just now looking at that, and it is definitely a lot easier than just, hey, we just need a YAML format. Good luck. <laughs> yes. Now, in the in the, the 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 end of it, I mean, that's what it spits out. But this will be able to to kind of give you those guardrails. Uh, that make, th th I mean, that that is the hallmark of a GUI. Right. It's it's there right. to give you those guardrails to make right. this easy. Yeah. You don't have to be an expert on YAML files, what context, you, you know, all the groups and users that need access to what. You don't have to be the expert on that because the GUI's there. It just, it looks like here it's showing, all right, hit your drop down button. 
what group does this apply to? And you're like, oh, my security team. Okay. You click that. What access do they need? All right. You just need, you know, the security team will regenerate. We just want to be able to regenerate tokens for users. All right. Give them the access to that job. And guess what? They're off rather than futzing around learning. Okay. What does the word context mean on this YAML file right now? It's like, uh, hang on. Let me refer to someone who might actually know. But the GUI's there. I don't know if you have anything you want to touch on in the GUI specifically. I, I'm glad you brought it up that it's there. <laughs> yeah, just, just that it's there and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. But that is all I have for ACLs and user authentication. I'll tell you what, don't, I'm saying right now, don't take my uh, API next week. I'm hoping you don't. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that for you then. But that is all I have for uh, this week's integration discussion.